so one of the many things I'm interested in is drone image processing. Um, and Open Drone Map is an open source software package which allows you to take 2D drone images, so you fly your drone over some area, um, and you can then take those drone images, process them through Open Drone Map, um, and produce a mosaic image, um, and also, very importantly, a 3D point cloud to understand the topology of an area. For example, if you fly a drone over an area before, during, and after some flooding event, you can get a picture of what's going on um, in that space. Um, and one of the nice things about the Outras Flight Cloud um, is that it scales up. So you see here I've got um, an R4 instance because Open Drone Map requires a lot of memory, um, and I can have one instance running one set of images, um, and then through the job processing system, it will then auto scale up. Um, at another instance, uh, as another batch of images come through, um, and then at the end, um, it'll scale back down, um, and I can also just totally stop it if I want. Um, so wouldn't it be great um, if we could actually create a high-performance computing cluster at the push of a button? Uh, well, thanks to some work um, from my company, that is actually doable. So I've got here um, an AWS IoT button, um, and I'll now push that, um, and it's going to connect to the Wi-Fi network, um, and then securely connect to the AWS IoT service. The little green flash indicates if you can see that. Um, and now my cluster is actually starting. So I'm going to swap to my laptop now and take you through how that works and a bit of a demo. So if I come into the um, console here and refresh that, you can actually see there's a HPC cluster here, um, and it's in creation. That's the one I just started from my button. And if we come down to the events here, oops, sorry, if I need to pick the right one. Um, you can see it's running through um, a bunch of creation events. Um, the way this works very briefly um, is that through the IoT service, it then triggers a Lambda function, which then fills in the desired parameters of my instance size, the number of initial compute nodes, maximum number I'm interested in, username, SSH key, some software I want to auto-install, um, and set up my auto-scaling pol uh, policy to be um, enabled. Um, and then that tr triggers a much larger um, cloud formation stack, uh, which is the, uh, out which Altrus provides, and that's the sort of, um, if you like, the uh, HPC cluster defined as a piece of software, which is then run to actually set it all up. Now, if you don't have an IoT button, um, you can actually come in through the AWS Marketplace, um, and Outsource Flight have a couple of different offerings. Um, their professional edition, paid for, supported, um, and their free community edition, which is the one I'm using. Oh, it's a little bit more savvy. Um, and you can come in, and you select your region. It's in your region, and I want my personal HPC cluster. Um, and then I click Continue. And then I come down and click Launch with the CloudFormation console. And hit Next, because the defaults are OK on that one. And then on the next page, I can give it a name, um, and I can give it my username, etc. any features I want to configure, instance size, etc. cetera. Um, hit Next. Um, next again, that's fine. Acknowledge that it's going to create some IAM, some user role um, policies, um, and then click on Create. Now, the process takes um, a little while. Um, it usually takes 10 minutes, so I go away and get a coffee and wait for a little notif email notification on my watch that it's ready. So here's one which I started earlier in the tradition of cooking shows. Um, and I can see here my username and my IP address, which I can then use to log into my cluster here and um, at the console. Um, so Outtris, as mentioned, give you a whole bunch of software. So if I use their gridware tool, I can see a very large list of software packages here, do um, everything from different uh, research libraries through to TensorFlow um, for deep learning, Atlas, some biological packages, etc. Um, and then I could use Ultra's Gridware install and pick one I'm interested in. And done. 
and I can see it's there as part of the list of uh, modules available that I could use as part of my compute jobs. Um, so if I just come in um, and show you then some of the open drone map stuff I've set up. Um, I've got this script here which takes some data out of an S3 bucket, um, which is the drone images, puts it in the current directory, um, and then runs a submits a bunch of jobs to the queuing system. And these jobs, in turn, are just Docker jobs. Docker is a container system which packages up your software with, um, in this case, actually a large number of libraries required to run uh, Open Drone Map, which is one of the reasons I use Docker here. So it all plays quite nicely together, um, and don't have quite, uh, don't have quite the time to actually see it always scale because it takes a while to download and then start up and and actually take up the CPU. But I'll just start that job running anyway. So. So it's now copying those S3 files across. Um, while we're doing that, I am just going to jump through and actually show you what those files look like. A bit bigger. Um, so you can see here there's a drone which has flown over some area with some grassland, paths, etc. Um, and those are the input files that are there. Um, while that's going, I'll actually jump through and sort of show you how you then might take some of those outputs back out of S3. Um, so I've got a tool here called Forklift. There's also Cyberduck, which is for both Mac and Windows. Um, and I can just drag and drop um, files that I'm interested in back out of S3. Let's, I need to just reconnect to that one. Sorry. Five timbers. There we go. Um, and yeah, I can drag and drop um, files back out. It's giving me some weird errors, but I'll have to look at that later. Um, anyway, I've got the um, files here ready to go. Um, and um, this is the mosaic image, which is generated as one of the outputs. Um, and as well as that, I have my 3D point cloud. So I'll just make that a bit bigger. Um, and I can zoom in and fly around that and manipulate it, um, and I could put that into some other data analysis software if I wanted, um, and as well as, of course, taking the files out of S3 back to my laptop, I could make them public and share them with other researchers um, or, or even just do it on a restricted basis on access to that um, S3 bucket. So if I come back... Um, you'll see it's then submitted those jobs. They take a few hours to run, um, but we can see them in the queue here. So with the queuing software, oops, took the wrong one. I can see I've got my jobs there. If I needed to cancel one for some reason, I can cancel it, and I can run sin uh, S info and actually see my cluster there. And you see it's got um, a few nodes um, and it's doing some processing. Um, so that's um, what I had to show you, and we'll just jump back to the slides now. Um, so you might ask, um, how much did um, all of that cost? Um, these jobs take a few hours to run. If you run four of them um, across these large compute nodes, it takes, uh, and if you take advantage of spot pricing, you can actually get it down to $6, so the price of you know, a couple of cups of coffee or a very expensive Sydney cup of coffee. 